simply, in my mind, was Paul's vision statement. It says, not that I have already arrived at my goal. Okay, so he has said and hasn't arrived yet. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. What's he saying there? He said, the reason I, I, I'm living my life and doing what I do is because of what Christ did for me. He died for my sins. He pulled me out of the mire and into a place uh, where now I live for him. So all that I do, I do for him. So that's his vision statement. Now, he didn't put it in a vision statement words, but we, we need to learn to see those things because it's all over the Bible that way. And I've quoted a couple already. Uh, <clears throat> so he made that known to those men he was writing that letter to, that this is who he is uh, as an example. So you, you need to find out what your vision statement is, what God says and who God says you are. I'm sure that you'll know. Someone might say, as a young man right now, in fact, uh, God has called me to be a, a youth pastor or a pastor or a teacher or a worship leader or uh, a fireman, a policeman, a school teacher, whatever your job might be. But someone may say that. That's what I'm going to be. So a uh, men's leader stands around too so I can pick on him. So he might, his vision statement might be, okay, in five or ten years, being a young man, he may not want to look out to the end of his life. But he may look out five or 10 years and say, well, that's what I'm going to be doing for God. So you can use that type of example as a vision statement as well. Maybe you don't want to say, you know, this is how I'm going to live my life for the rest of my life. But I may say, this is how, what I want to accomplish now for God in my life. So for the next five years, this is what I'm going to do. So by this timeline, this is what I'm going to Accomplish. That's where I'm going to be in five to ten years from now. Do it. <laughs> so, um, when I was uh, a younger man and had still had kids at home, last I uh, last week, yeah, still have kids at home. Actually, <laughs> can't get rid of them. I don't know what it is. No, it's great. So when I was younger and still had uh, children at home, I had two boys. And uh, we were attending uh, Assembly of God Church in Phoenix, and they had, and you may not know what this is, but they had a boys group called Royal Rangers. Yeah. And basically it's, it's a boys group like Boy Scouts, only Christian based. So everything that we did was around Jesus Christ. So their uh, vision statement was basically this, to reach, teach, and keep. I always have trouble with this. Reach, teach, and keep boys for Jesus Christ. And that, when I first heard that, that just struck me so hard because I had boys of my own and they needed, you know, they needed to grow up in, in Christ and have some meaning in their life other than where Boy Scouts takes kids and so on. Of course, that was a long time ago, so we don't have the same Boy Scout issues then as we do now. But still, it was secular. It wasn't based on Christ. So we did all the things. We had Bible studies and we had lessons and we did stuff every week. We went camping, we went fishing. We did everything with the, with the kids. And we had a very large group. But what makes it so fantastic is that it worked. Mm -hmm. Because we were reaching, we were teaching, and we were keeping those boys. My oldest son, uh, please don't take this as braggadocious, but he's a pastor. And he has a Royal Ranger group in his church because he's assembly. And my middle son, when he can only talk about, you know, great things growing up, was always Royal, it's always Royal Rangers, even though he's not where he needs to be right now, it was, it's always Royal Rangers. So he has a troop, and his own son has went all the way through Royal Rangers, and he's taught his son to do that, and he's got the highest level, what's it called? Gold Medal, Gold Medal of Achievement. So his, his oldest son has got that. His youngest son's going to get his through that too. So there's three, three generations alive that because I did what I needed to do. And Praise God. <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, it, it just is honoring to know that God kept his word, mm -hmm. that he kept them, he pulled them in, that they're involved. They're living for God because I did what I did. Because Royal Rangers had a vision, 
and I had a vision. It's pointed at a certain point in life to move forward and do those things. So there's an, that's an example in my life of what vision and a vision statement would do. So why do we do it? And my, my reason is because it can stop us from, uh, or someone in your family, or your family, from going the wrong direction. You know, if I hadn't have done that, where would my kids be? Where would, where would their kids be? And so on. If I hadn't focused on what the, those things meant. Now, that came from the Word. You know, yours needs to come from the Word as well. The other way around that is you can say, if by not doing it, you can say, well, I'm going to base my life on what may come, you know, by chance, or just reacting to change, or being change-oriented. So in my mind, uh, and this was, is not personal to you, but in where we're trying to go, we don't want to be change-oriented. We don't want to react to every change that comes along, which comes along all the time. So every time there's a change and we react to it, we're going to see as we talk more that there's going to be issues that come up. And if we just react to that and go some helter-skelter direction because of that change, then we're not going to be lining up where God wants us to go and how he wants us to live our life. But don't you think you can change going towards God if you react, if you react to it, but do it in a positive way and not kind of sound like well, what I would say is going the, in a negative direction? Yeah, well, it, you could react and go in the negative di direction. What I'm trying to say is that we want to act and go in God's direction right. because we're approaching change from a different perspective than the world addresses change today. So that's saying like being prepared for that change instead of taking a knee-jerk reaction when yeah. something does come across and it might be changing. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. Um, but in essence, yes, we want to be prefer prepared for the change. Now we can't, I mean, change is happening constantly, right? Mm -hmm. Everything we do, there's change. You know, and you hear people say lots of things about it, and I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'll just go back. But I think I'll answer your question. Uh, but we need to act on what God wants us to do through change. When we were sinners, and I'll say this again later, but when we were sinners, God took us from sin to something better. And that's what change is all about. God is trying to do something in our lives to take us from something to something or into something that's better. So, so that change that we think, and the world thinks especially, is so bad and so can be so troubling is really God trying to move in our lives and move in the world. But the world has approached it from the wrong perspective. When we talk about change now, we're going to talk about when we see change happen, say someone loses their job as an example. They're angry, they're upset. They don't look at what God's doing. They're saying, I've lost my job. Where's our finances? You know, who's your source? Mm -hmm. So we want, to, we want to change the attitude and the approach to what happened because you lost your job in that, okay, God has taken me from that job to something better. And I've heard people say many times, we've said it ourselves, you know, well, if we don't, if we don't get this house or if we don't get this position or if we don't get this, then God's some, God something better for us, right? So we, we need to take that approach with everything that we're doing. Um, and I'll, I'll try to make that easier to understand as we move along here. But that's, that's where we're going. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. OK. Um, so how do we accomplish our vision? You know, we talked about um, it, it, is, it is where we want to be over a certain period of time. Where do you see ourselves over some period of time? And I gave you my examples. So in the, going back to the business world, what we have is a business saying, well, we'll create a mission statement. And a mission statement is, how are you going to get where you want to be? So now we're going to talk about goals, and we're going to talk about those things that come up. So it defines the goals and objectives you set in place to accomplish your vision. So as I said in mine, I want to be, I want to live for the Lord all my life. I want to gain in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and reach the lost. Um, so how do I how do I do that for the rest of my life? I have to set some guidance in a, in the mission statement that would say. 
okay, I'm going to have these objectives. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to read the word, pray, be, um, I can't read my writing. What did that say? Oh, well. I'm going to teach. So uh, I'm going to do the things in my life that help me gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It get, helps me to move through my life and grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So, uh, so those objectives have, have goals as well. So if I'm going to teach, well, what's the, what's the reason I'm teaching? And what am I going to teach? And how is that going to help me grow? So uh, through life, we've, we've uh, you and I both have taught uh, two and three year, three year old kids, three and four, three and four, four, or five. four or five, whatever they were, they were young. <laughs> we've taught junior high kids, we've taught adult classes, we've done all kinds of things uh, and seen God do great and mighty things in all of those, uh, which helped us, which helped us with our kids, which helped us to grow our kids the way they should grow and so on. So you have to set uh, objectives and goals to reach your vision, and that's how that is accomplished. So what happens when you don't? What happens if you don't meet those objectives or those goals? Set them again. What's that? Set them again. Set them again, okay? Anybody else? Okay, so you set them again. So uh, let me ask this then too. Why, why weren't you able to accomplish those things. You need to look at that too and say, did I have the commitment I needed during that time to actually follow through and do the goals and objectives that I set in my life to move forward? Or did I fall back into uh, what the world's perspective is on change? Because when, you do, when you're doing any of those things, you're still going to be going through change. It's how you approach it. So you can decide every time there's that point of decision when change happens, uh, what you're going to do and how you're going to address it. So you have to keep focused, and that's what I'm saying if you keep on the vision, on the goals and objectives toward where God wants you to be over a period of time, then you're not going to have as much of this wavering going on in your life that, that gets you uh, from not accomplishing those goals. So you may have to set them up again. So. Is this really one that I need to do, or do I need to do something a little different? You like? Basically, what I was going to say that maybe, maybe the reason that you <coughs> please that maybe the reason that you didn't make meet your goals is because your goal was not aligned with your vision, and God knew that, and so maybe you didn't have the resources that you needed to meet that goal, but you weren't supposed to. Well, that's, that's true, and that can happen. But um, I, th I think if we really pray and work on those things, that that's going to happen pretty quickly. So you can, you can see that right away. Okay, that's probably not one I should be doing. I think God's going to reveal that. Holy Spirit's going to reveal that. Uh, the doors will open and so on. The things that you're talking about will happen. And that may be very true. There are good things that, that we, we can do, but it, it also me that means that we don't necessarily need to do those good things. We need to do, and that may be just me thinking those good things rather than really having the right direction. Well, and, and if big picture vision, I mean, you just ask yourself, okay, so maybe I set a vision that was unreachable. So what hindered, so. What hindered me from reaching that goal? And ask those questions because it should be clear as day, okay, well, maybe fear set in here or doubt set in here or change. I mean, obviously change happens, but as long as your vision is, is godly, then you'll know, okay, what can I do differently to reach that goal this time? I'll, answer, I'll say something about that. Go ahead. So I was uh, reading in one of the Bible studies I'm doing from Lisa Bevere, and she was talking about pretty much the same topic, which I'm like, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me here? Um, anyway, she, she is a writer, first and foremost, and, and she's become a speaker and other things as, along with that, but she was trying to get this latest book accomplished. She was getting phone call after phone call after phone call of wanting her to do this and wanting her to speak here and wanting all these good things 
that were uh, coming her way that she was having to say no to the good things, even though they were really good, in order to accomplish the goal and the vision that was before her. Okay. I just looked at the clock and it's almost 7.30. Yeah, hurry up. Wow, and I'm on page three. <laughs> All right, so I'll probably have to, I'll have to finish this another, another Wednesday. Um, and I, I know I'm giving you a lot of basic information, but I, I think it's necessary to have that so that when I get to the, some of the issues that are going on with change and what's happening in our world and in our churches and those types of things that you understand kind of where I'm coming from. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that was talking about a mission statement. So I do want to go back before we get too far here, back to the scripture again and uh, talk about Paul and what he did. So we, we read verse 12, that was his uh, vision statement. Verse 13 says, <clears throat> and he, he kind of tags this all the way through. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken a hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. So that's his mission statement. He's saying, I haven't attained all my goals yet in my mission statement. I am still working on that. I'm moving forward. But what I do do, this one thing I am doing out of who knows how many, is forgetting what is behind. What does that mean? Forgetting yesterday. What's behind isn't going to matter anymore, right? That was a good point that Pastor Carl brought up Sunday. Yeah. Cal? Don't, it's dead. Yeah. It's dead. That don't Micah. forget about tomorrow, or don't even think of it. Send oh. <laughs> I know that. You know, he was saying, don't think about yesterday, or don't even think about tomorrow. Yeah. But I thought, you know, even the good things, he kind of said, don't keep bringing up the good old days or whatever. So I right. thought that was pretty interesting. Right. And again, uh, it's taken us. God's taken us from someplace, the past, to the future to what God has for us to do. So if that's the case, we don't need to remember back in, for example, our sinful days or where we came from or what happened or why, why were we hurt or what happened in this period of time where this change took place, this transition from where we were to where we're going. And then he says after that, uh, forgetting what is behind. Forgetting to me also is forgiving. And I, I, you know, I'm not going to say that's something that, that's in the Word, but God says it the other way around, right? He forgives our sins and forgets them, right? So forgetting to me attaches itself always to forgiving. And we really need to know that. And we really need to use that when we go from some place where we were through change, through transition to where we're heading toward, we need to make sure that forgiveness is in there. Because a lot of things happen. You know, if you lose your job, you're upset or you're bitter or you're angry with your boss for what happened. Maybe they fired you or maybe they didn't. But whatever those changes are can be devastating at times to what's, what's going on. So we need to forgive as well. And then it says, and straining toward what is ahead. <clears throat> that sounds like it's an easy thing to do, right? Straining, straining, straining. toward what's ahead, right? Yeah, so it means there's some work involved in that. So when you, have, when you have a vision and you have goals and a mission, and Paul has said, here I am, I am the Apostle Paul, I'm in prison, I have had a great life, but here I am still, I am working toward forgetting what has happened in the past, maybe being hurt and, and offended by people, you know, I'm sure that was going on back then as much as it's going on now. Uh, straining to keep moving forward, to do what God needs me to do, even in my later years or my experienced years. He presses on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So he's saying, I'm straining to move ahead because it's all about Christ. It's all about what he did, and he is going to present that to everyone he can because that's his vision and mission in his life. 
All right. Where I was. <clears throat> All right. So I only have a few minutes, so I'll do a few more, and, and then we'll do the, do the rest later. So why do we need a vision statement and a mission statement? Satan robs us of time, focus, determination, direction, commitment, the change that happens in the world and the pace of what's going on constantly. And if you were doing the men's curriculum, if I said, well, what's attached and the normal thing would change? What's, starts with a C, crisis, right? Change, crisis. Always comes with crisis. And crisis always comes with? Change. Well, yes. <laughs> okay. Stress. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. All right. So the world around us so, is also an issue about why we need a vision. Do whatever you want. Do it when you want. You know, all those things that are happening in the world, it doesn't matter what you, whatever you want to do, no matter what you have committed to or what you've been directed to do, if you, if you feel like you need to do something else, well, that's truth for you, so you can you go do whatever you want to do and be whatever you want to be. That's the attitude of our world today, right? The inc inconsistencies of life. Everything is always changing. So we don't want to be change-oriented. All right, so talking about change, I guess I better quit pretty quick. What is change? Change is a constant, normal part of life. It makes or becomes something different or it takes or uses something different, no matter how you want to look at that, change is always happening and changing what you do. So we've always done it that way, and I, people say that, and, and why do we want to change it? Well, maybe it's, it's going to be grow. better, maybe it's not. What's that? It's how you grow. How you grow. Change. You can, absolutely. And you should, absolutely. Um, a lot of people say, I hate change. You know, I wish things would just remain the same, right? Never going to happen. Yeah. It's a constant of life. And with, every, with that, uh, there's nothing we can do about that. But uh, what, happens, um, what happens when we just react to change? I think most of the time, if we just react to change without a plan, it goes south. It goes south. <laughs> most of the time. Now, it can end up in a crisis, and we talked about that. And crisis is common to, is um, uh, common and uh, normal in life as well. It's common to life, and it, it does the same thing as when there's change, there's always a crisis. And with crisis, there's always um, stress. So uh, somebody said, and I don't know who it was, but we never know when crisis will come. It's been said you are either in a crisis or about to be faced by one. So such is the normal flows of life. That's right. So crisis, again, is common in life. It's normal in life. And no one can live in this life without crisis. Whenever there is change, there's a crisis. And what accompanies a crisis? Stress. So uh, I think I'm going to stop right there because we got about four minutes or so, five. And I'll just say, uh, I'll have to ask Ray about this, if he wants me to do the rest of this next week or if he wants to switch. We can talk about that later. But uh, is this all right? Yes. Are you enjoying it? Is it making sense? Does it help understanding that stuff a little bit? OK, good. All right, so any other comments or thoughts? I got a comment. Sure. If the, cha if the change is. Uh, not following Christ, I don't think we should do it. <laughs> exactly. If the change is not following Christ, we shouldn't do it. Right, so we, uh, yeah, Pastor, Ray's, Pastor Ray has a comment. Oh. You know, I think when you have a vision, you learn to respond to things because you have to think about how it's going to fit. If you don't have a vision, you react to things. Exactly. And it creates chaos, even more change. It certainly can. And I think 
You know, if I asked everyone in here uh, how many people really had a vision for their life, a Christian vision, or any kind of vision, it would be very few hands because we don't look at life in that perspective. So we don't have the same plan to, for our life to move forward. And then we wonder why we're having such problems in direction. Yeah, Jeff? Okay, so I was listening to you on my way over. Uh, the mission statement made me think of a, a general in a battle. We have a plan, we're gonna go take that hill. As we're going to take that hill, something's gonna change. So we're gonna have a crisis of how we're gonna reinforce that, that brigade that's gonna take that hill. If we don't, we're gonna have the stress of not being able to get it. Same thing with our Christian life. Yeah. If we don't have a plan to when something comes up, we're gonna have stress. All right, so I've gotta, I've gotta ask a question. What is a crisis? What does that mean, mean to you? As, what's a crisis? Something not going our way. Problem. I can't control. Something out of our control. Something. It, 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 I say it, uh, it causes stress. Um, something out of the norm. Unexpected. Unexpected. Harmful. Harmful. I'm hearing a lot of negative <laughs> connotation of the word crisis. <laughs> and you know what's created that? The world today, because crisis didn't mean that, I'll say 30 years ago. Crisis was more medical than anything else, and you could be in crisis physically with your health, but that's where it ended, but it has changed. It's been applied to this. So even Ed Cole has used crisis. When I first read that in, in the book, and he was talking about change, there's always crisis in change, I went, what? That's ridiculous. There can't be... But crisis, so I had to look it up. So crisis is a time when a difficult or important decision must be made. That's what a crisis is. So when change happens and there's something that's taking place in your life that's caused a change to what's happening, that's a point of time of crisis when a difficult or an important decision must be made. Not something that's harmful or hurt or, you know, all the pain and all the stuff we think about with crisis, I think of crisis as almost like a disaster, right? Mm -hmm. This is a kind of cause, a disaster in my life. It doesn't mean that. But it does mean I need to make some choices and I have to make some important decisions. So if my life is based on a vision and a mission that's toward Christ and what he can do in that particular time and what he will do in that particular time, It'll get me from where I was to where he wants me to be, not from me making a decision in a time of crisis in my head that I don't know what I'm going to do and go, as, as Pastor Ray was saying, whatever direction I think I should go and not do something right. And so now I'm going this way instead of toward, toward Christ. Now I've got to have Christ change my change my uh, direction and bring my bath. The board says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God, but sometimes we get off his steps and we have to have his change bring us back in line. So he changes our steps and keeps us going. As long as we stay straight, we're fine, right? All right. Well, thank you for coming tonight. God bless you. Have a safe trip home. I pray that you will um, have a blessed night and sleep well and you're being be, um, I, people keep saying stuff to me and I keep getting distracted. Why don't you continue this next week and finish this? Okay. Is that all right with everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I would love to do that. All right. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be here and to raise you up and glorify you. God, I pray that this is a, a uplifting opportunity for people to look at their lives look at the change that goes on in their lives, the change in our church, and realize that you are taking us from somewhere that's not necessarily where you want us to be to a place that you do want us to be that is better than where we were. Change is not necessarily always bad. It's just how we approach it and how we approach you in it and what choices we make during that time. So God, help us to be the men and women of God you want us to be to look to you and to have you as our vision, that for the rest of our life we'll be serving you and using you as our direction and, 
and our focus. We love you. We give you praise and thanks. Bless these people and give them a great night's rest for tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. God bless. See you next week or Sunday or wherever. Sunday.